team, welcome back. Another absolutely glorious, glorious spring day here. <laughs> um, yeah, just getting some more firewood. Um, Got to get, yeah, there's quite a bit I need to get on to getting. Um, not only to sell, but also for us, because I want to make sure that I start getting ahead. <clears throat> now that we're not farming anymore and not always on the move, um, I can actually start farming some firewood because that's the best way. Um, if you have the room to do it, um, then do it because ideally, if you can have um, wood, so you'd have wood for this coming winter, and then um, also starting on the following winter, and then basically you're you're set. You know, regardless if you have a really long winter, which this year it's almost seeming like it. We've got a pretty cold southerly blowing in over the last um, 24, 48 hours. It's pretty chilly up here today. Um, and yeah, the fire's going at home, which I'm nearly out of wood. Just the way things worked out this year, which um, moving forward, that is not gonna happen. I can tell you that. So yeah, we'll get into, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna deal with some of the smaller stuff today. Well, it's not that small, but um, just while it's wet, it's easier for me to handle. I need to get me one of those, or a couple of those um, wood hooks, because they they look bloody handy. But yeah, I'll get this, get some of this cut up and get a load back, and then um, I'll see how I go. I did notice on the way up, there's actually a couple of bloody trees I didn't notice. Um, well, I just haven't noticed um, right beside the track that I can probably pull out and get fairly easily. So we may look at them today. We may do that another day. I don't know. I'm going to run the smaller saw today. Um, just give it a run and a bit easier um, on the old shoulders and back working with that so we'll rip into it just going to give the chain a quick little touch up I was cutting a little bit of wood the other day just some mill slab stuff and um, there's a couple of little tiny stones and stuff in it This chain is um, pretty poked, but still works. For anybody wondering what the saw is, so yes, yeah, a Olio Mac GSH 56. So it's a 55.9, basically 56 cc saw, um, and it's got the Oh, that bloody easy start system in it. So you, instead of cranking on it like a normal saw, you you just start pulling it out and it just starts itself. Not one of those, not the ergo start where you pull the cord all the way out and let it go and it starts. I'll show you what I mean. It's got a primer bulb on it too. That's the other thing that I did like about it. a lot of these newer saws don't actually have the primer bulb and then quite often you got to crank on them a fair bit um but yeah this one's got the primer bulb so i'll just give it three pumps and it's just got the standard choke there turn it on and then yeah it's just like i can start it left-handed as well so it's just and then that's one so there was two two pulls so that's how easy it is to pull that's all you have to do, and then I'll push the choke in now, and it should just start. I haven't, I haven't started that for about probably four days, five days. And I didn't run it that much the other day either when I did use it. But normally, like if you're using it every day, you'll do the two pulls with the choke. And then normally the first pull after that, um, she'll start up. But always, it's quite a cold day too. Always warm your, 
all my stores aren't machines, whatever it is, same with your vehicles. Like I see a lot of young people especially um, with the older diesels and stuff, they just turn them on, boom, off they go. Better off letting everything warm up. No different to you in the morning, you know, if it's a freezing cold morning, you don't want to drag yourself out of bed. And what do you do, you know, in the middle of winter, you, you crawl out of bed, you go make yourself a coffee, whatever you drink, and you want to go and sit in front of the fire and warm up for a bit. So all these, you know, all these machines are the same thing, especially if you're using them a lot, whether they're new or old, but definitely the older stuff. Let it warm up, let all the, you know, the metals warm up, the oils in them, everything like that. Prolong the life of them. <coughs> And generally too they'll perform a little bit better if you just you know at, at first I'll be fine but if you start a saw up straight away say and then just start cranking on it you start wearing everything out pretty quickly your rings and everything like that and before you know it all of a sudden you think you got a hunger junk saw when the reality is it's the operator that's caused the main issue we'll get into it anyway Anybody that does any tree work or firewood or anything knows that beautiful smell of pine. I like macrocarpa as well, but that pine resin, I don't know what it is, eh? Gotta bottle it. Get the old ladies. Ladies will be running for you. You young fellas out there. Another tip for people out there that maybe, you know, just do their own bit of firewood here and there or are new to chainsaw work, all that sort of thing. If you're dealing with, um, you know, dirtier sort of wood like I am here, which this is all, you know, had a bit of stones through it and all that sort of thing from when they logged it, debark what you can um, to clean it up. You don't need to debark the whole log, like of course I just have because it just came off easy. Um, just You only need to do it really where you want to cut, so if that's every 10, 12 inches, whatever, or 300, 350 mils. Um, yeah, you only need to debark where you want to cut, where you need to cut. And then the other side of it is too, is even if you've got fresh trees, if you're going to be cutting all day, and say you've got like thick bark, like old old trees old growth trees and they got you know sort of four inch bark six inch bark whatever it is if you can even try and debark some of those where you want to cut um just because if you're cutting bark all day that even dulls your chain so you, if you don't want to be forever sharpening your chain up then it pays sometimes just to do what you can you don't like clean trees you don't need to do all of it but even if it was every second cut or something like that 
just saves your chain out a little bit more um, but yeah big thing with firewood especially is learning how to fire well getting that gullet out making sure you've got a nice sharp edge <coughs> it's um yeah firewood especially is totally different to you know guys that are production falling and all that sort of thing you, you usually with firewood you're dealing with dirtier wood so yeah just a few little tips there hopefully it can help somebody right so we've got our log I have cut a piece through here somewhere but then there's all these rings so right now we've got compression wanting to go down so I'm just going to show you how I deal with not getting pinched or avoid getting pinched for those who don't know cut all the way through well and truly so yeah basically all you need to do come over the top bring that other side in a little bit and then come back around and then come down maybe halfway just over halfway on the log and sort of that bottom third at least the ball cut in take it out the bottom and then basically you end up with a piece in the center of the tree that is you know yay thick to just say and then you just come back up and then as you start to feel it go as you would have seen you just start feathering it so by that I mean just you work the throttle and just slowly work your way up until you're at the point where some of them they will completely just crunch down real quick so if you're feathering it already that way you should avoid your chain or your bar getting pinched if they you know both ends fell really quick this end of course didn't which I knew it wouldn't because up here you've got a mound where it's pretty stuck on. Just thought I'd quickly show, I've just run out of my first tank of gas, well not quite. I would have enough to roll this other log over and just nip those last little bits. Um, but yeah, just to give you an idea of anybody that may be interested in buying like this saw or you know a saw similar to it. Um, just the fuel consumption. So as you can see, like I've got... Uh, once that's split, there's probably about a cubic meter of wood there. And then about the same in this log that I just need to nip up. And this stuff, it's not easy cutting by any means. Like it's um, it's pretty dense and fairly knotty sort of wood. Um, and that chain is, is, you know, fairly worn. So... Um, when this has a new chain, I can do, of this sort of wood, or a bit easier cutting, I can cut about 3 cubic metres worth, um, or close to a cord, if you're in America or somewhere, up on one, one tank of gas. Now, I don't know if these are sold, like where they're sold in the world, but I know, you know, here in New Zealand, easy as to go and get one if you if you were in the market for a a lighter weight saw like these will be an excellent saw the other reason i bought this was i thought it'd be a it'd be a good saw for my wife to be able to use um and then you know the kids as they as they get a bit bigger saws like this you know 10 11 year old kids perfect perfect sort of saw to be um learning to cut some bigger wood on now i've already started our son he's already started using a chainsaw um that's what that that ms 180 i've had that for years 
and then that little top handle one he's started to use those um because he's been you know he's really keen to get into starting to try so of course i stand with him and help him um but he is getting to the point where i can quite comfortably like hold um so sometimes um what i do is like if we say getting manuka um i'll just cut the logs i'll cut them in logs to length to the trailer and then what i do is i just take them home and then what i can do is bring them off the edge of the trailer and i can hold the logs steady and he can be cutting them the biggest thing i want to try and get is a pair of kids chaps i don't know if there is any around or maybe get somebody to make some um i need to keep an eye out because my i had a pair of chaps i was thinking about cutting up and putting sewing onto a pair of pants for him but bloody rats got in and chewed them so i might need to try and pick up a an old pair or find an old pair or something somewhere um but yeah it's something definitely like for people with kids out there don't don't be shy like oh i sort of see it as so long as you're you know also aiding them with things that may potentially harm them quite badly um then there's no reason you should uh stop them from trying things because at the end of the day it's no different to you know when you've got kids drugs alcohol any of that sort of stuff the more you prevent them from um you know learning about what it is what harm it can cause all of that sort of thing then the more they're going to rebel against you down the track and do things behind your back the same goes for you know for um you know kids that are do like work their ass off around home and never given any pocket money or anything they go around stealing from their parents and and then that just leads to worse things as they get older so definitely for people out there with kids don't hesitate to um you know let them try things that are a little bit dangerous just make sure you're there to give them the guidance and, and help that they need see that sort of worked bloody let go though but it got it, it got it moved. Try and get it up and over now. I don't know if you guys can see the way it works. Like you can, I can move that by hand just by pulling on it. So when you've got when you've got a wrap or you know a one and a half two wraps or whatever of chain or rope around a log it doesn't actually take a lot just for the way i don't know what it would be physics or i don't know i don't know the way it works anyway um yeah well i just want to try and get that if we can up now because then that's that's blowing all this apart now for me so i can start getting into that and then yeah Rain starting to come down, so get this done and um, might get loaded up and take this load home. Now, pretty buggered as well. My back is killing me. So is the rest of my body. We're all loaded up. Full load of rings. Um, yeah. Get this out of here. And then we've still got about a row. Two rows nearly. Oh, there's about two rows here in the trailer. And then we'll work on this one next time and maybe get into that, I don't know. Start on that other big one down there as well. And I've still got some more down there to cut up. 
So we'll pull out of here and get for home. So that about wraps up today's video, guys. So hopefully a few of those tips have helped people. Um, that's the whole point of why I wanted to start YouTube in the first place. Whether it's anything to do with chainsaws, hunting, trapping, fencing, whatever. Stuff that I um, have done a lot of over the years. Basically, you know, the more knowledge people put out there and have learned and whatnot, the better. And I feel like that's where, especially here in New Zealand, not sure what it's like overseas, but people here in New Zealand, they like, there's so much ego built up around things. Like you see it on TikTok and Instagram and on here at times. It's not so bad on here, but all those short form platforms, the amount of people eh, that just jump on and bring people down, bash people bloody up in the comments and stuff. And at the end of the day, I don't understand it. I guess the they've got issues of their own but you know there's no need for it really people are out here trying to help other people out share some knowledge maybe make a living I don't know and that is one thing that I would love to do with this channel is get as much support as possible surrounding it and then be able to start to do all this sort of stuff make money off off YouTube so I can pay bills and whatnot but that way I don't need to go and charge people so much or at all for certain things like um, tree work is bloody expensive so is fencing nowadays um, I'd love to be able to do a lot of work for people where if there's materials involved that's all they have to worry about covering and then the labor's free um, same with firewood I'd love to be able to just give a lot of firewood away for free to elderly people and whatnot um, and people in need and then I do the same, you know, same with with my hunting and stuff. Like I'd love to be able to be able to have more time to be out and about getting animals and being able to share the meat around with a lot of people. Because a lot of people don't have that opportunity. And um, yeah, and then that's also another reason why I wanted to do YouTube and that sort of thing is just to be able to help share knowledge and maybe, you know, be able to meet up with some people that are a bit less fortunate or want to learn more in person and then yeah go from there anyway guys thank you very much for watching and all the likes comments and whatnot is really really appreciated the more support the better and at the end of the day youtube's free um when it gets to a point one day when i can have ads and stuff on here then so be it but you know anyway Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, all that sort of good stuff. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one, folks.